What's up, everybody? Matt Aguilar here from Comic Book Nations, the pull list where we talk all things comics all the time. Uh, I am joined by two of my very favorite people to talk comics with, Kofi Outlaw and Nicole Drum. What's up, guys? Hello. What's up? Well, uh, we got a ton of comics to get to. Now, I know this one is actually a little stacked in the big two. Uh, there's just a lot going on. Uh, but we we are featuring some things outside of the big two as well. So we got you covered there. Uh, but there's just too many big kind of event books happening um, that we, we needed to touch base on. So let's start here with uh, one of my favorites, uh, Nightwing. Nightwing hit its big 300th issue. Uh, it's actually issue 113, but legacy it is 300. 300 and uh as look everyone knows how much i adore tom taylor uh <laughs> tom taylor does amazing things uh does amazing things with nightwing in particular just gets the character and i feel like 300 is just kind of that perfect landmark celebration style issue just that uh, just gives me the you know warm and fuzzies man i just there's just something awesome about this book and, and what tom does um you know, uh, Kofi, how you how you feeling about Nightwing? Because I know it's not a book we've covered a ton here, uh, but I, I didn't know if you kept up with it, what you thought of this one. I thought, first of all, I was like, are we just doing, like, actual numbers and legacy number celebrations now? Because I feel like we just did, like, what, Night Nightwing 100 not too long ago? Wasn't that, like, a whole legacy thing we it, did, too? Or, like, a it whole... It very well could have been. <laughs> <laughs> um, he just loves a party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, you know me. Like, I think legacy ones, like these special issues that kind of like try to help us really reframe the character and get them in like these bigger lights. They can be hit or miss. I, I didn't love the particular. I love the art before this kind of run. You know, when we were doing that other kind of run of Nightwing, but um, you know, Tom Taylor is is just making Dick Grayson in this character a centerpiece for dc and kind of setting him up for a good future and i think that's safely in the bag even though i don't necessarily enjoy this particular kind of legacy issue gotcha i do love man i do love some daniele uh di nicuolo artwork uh from you know got a big got a big start there from power rangers and then has gone on to become one of kind of the uh regular team ups with tom um i think it was seven secrets is it seven secrets seven yeah i think i think it was uh that was also a really fun series uh nicole how are you feeling about nightwing in general uh and and also this issue in particular i, I love nightwing in general i love i love like, i'm also a big tom taylor fan i love basically anything tom taylor touches i feel like is this really human touch to it and I always appreciate that when it comes to how he approaches characters. But I really, really loved this issue. And uh, this is one of those rare comics that made me cry my face off at one point. Um, there's a specific <laughs> moment where um, he, either at the, there's there's a spot where he says, and George is proud of you too. And yes! I'm not going to lie. I lost it. Um, and I thought the art in that particular section was just fantastic. And I, I, I'm kind of with Kofi here. The art here is not a specifically my favorite. I, I mean, there's some great moments in this where the facial expression, and you're showing one right now I was actually going to bring up, where the in very neat handwriting. I loved that so much. Like, I want that as, like, an avatar for something because it's hilarious. But the, the pizza... Um, the exchange yes. there in the pizza shop, the art, the colors, and then that line in George's product would be proud of you too. I got really emotional. And I just feel yeah. like the way Tom Taylor writes Nightwing, the, the 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 dynamic and the balance of everything in this, this is one of those issues that felt a little bit like we were getting a slice of life, giving a character their flowers but also advancing the story at the same time with the villain and everything was playing in concert. It was like a symphony kind of coming together to where I didn't feel like it was filler. I didn't feel like it was too fluffy and it just felt like a landmark moment. That was also a shift in dynamic and it all just fired on all the cylinders for me. And then I lost it and started crying and had to redo all my makeup before. <laughs> Okay. So this came out with D so so DC still doing Tuesdays. So I feel like got a day. I feel like I'm not going to spoil the ending and what that sets up because I do mm -hmm. think, like you said, I think it really like sets the table really well mm -hmm. for moving forward. So it wasn't just a 
you know, kind of like fluff issue because there's there's stuff in there that builds to the next thing. Um, and then also stuff that pays off if you've been following the series uh, for a minute. But I will say that that moment, uh, Bruno Redondo does do that section with the George yeah. line and stuff. That small section is him. And and it's it was awesome that because he's really good at likenesses. And so for that to nail that and, and who sang the line and all that, like that makes a difference, right? There's just a right lot of there. attention paid to stuff. Uh, I agree with you. I, and when you said I got emotional, I was like, which part? There's like a couple, right? I had a couple, <laughs> that, like, you know, and there's just section, like really just sweet like, moments. Mm. Yeah. Yes. That whole section, as yes. soon as we got into that section, I'm like, oh no. Oh, Tom you guys are really, You guys are really People invested in the life of Dick Grayson here. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah I love man. Dick Grayson. Okay, first of all, everybody... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am a Batman bat fam person. I love Dick Grayson. Everyone assumes that I'm just like, oh, Batman's your favorite. Dude, I love Dick Grayson. Like, no, I, I wouldn't actually, assume that. I would assume I, I know I've I've been around you two both enough to know that you'd probably be Dick Grayson fans. I mean, I was always I came in, I don't know, just maybe where I came into Batman in the 90s. Like, I'm a big Tim Drake fan. Like that that's my Tim Robin. Drake is great. I also yeah. love Tim Drake. I also and love yeah, Tim Drake. Like basically right give me any of the bat boys in Batman, and I just love them all. I even I've even come around to loving Damien, and I can't. Oh yeah, yeah you did. I mean, I didn't want to go there, but yeah, I you love Damien. You got me. Now. Look, you yeah, got me yeah. at long last. I finally come around to loving Damien, which is why I love that in very neat handwriting so freaking much. Damien had two shining moments in this he week's did. books. <laughs> so like, and we'll get to the other one, but like, Damien, Damien rules, man. I love what We're they've done. With but yeah, I agree. Um, and I just love, look, Tom Taylor, you know, uh, if you look at my background, it's no shock to know that like, you know, Batgirl is one of my favorite characters. Barbara Gordon specifically is one of my, is, is probably, if not my favorite DC character of all time, one of them top, top two or three. Right. Uh, and the way he portrays them together, mm -hmm. I, I just, I just love the way, like he just, Tom Taylor just gets that relationship and that yep. dynamic. And it's just, it's just wonderful to see. Um, so we, yeah, I, I agree. about the relationship in this issue that I was like, Ooh. and I love that. <laughs> I love that. There's like these little, little personal things that made me kind of go, Oh, Oh, and I, I love that. I just, lo I love the way Tom Taylor humanizes characters and just i really appreciate that also we need more and i'm not gonna wing. tell you what it is you got to read it yourself <laughs> the boat the boat wing rules and i need more of the boat wing <laughs> and it's awesome so there you go i know it ties into the current plot of what's happening with grayson and everything and it's just the perfect reason it's what it's one of the things i love about what joshua williams has done over in superman is like using the opportunities the plot creates to have fun and create superman armor that has a specific plot point it just looks cool same way with like a ship or you know what we'll get to in superman this this week as well um so yeah uh really really dug it let's move to uh, a very different book in tone <laughs> and in everything uh helen of windhorn number two uh i know in the first issue me and kofi um talked about kind of you know there was a there was a lot it had to set up a lot in that first issue and then it kind of hits you with the big hook at the very end uh and i'm very curious to know what you think of this issue kofi because i thought it would kind of end up flipping it but it did not <laughs> it did not flip it and in fact it's it's kind of formatted in this in the same way obviously there's just some different some very different uh, sequences and ways it sets it up but it really is like kind of that wait for hook payoff and there's a lot of other things revealed through dialogue in this issue did this work for you did it not how you feeling um yeah a lot of con a lot of tom king to talk about this week um yeah <laughs> there there's uh, in spite of everything like uh, uh this creative team is so strong that it still has me and like they do enough to keep me hooked to want to know like what comes next because I know in the next issue, or at least I think because the point of view of this is, is you got to keep track of like what the point of view, we are several layers yeah. deep mm -hmm. in point of view throughout this. And then sometimes you begin to forget. So you get to like the, you know, the guy going through the tape recorder and the stuff and I'm like, wait, what are we doing? And then I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean, as a chapter of a book in kind of how I'm looking at this, like a volume, the next volume of a tome or something like that, it was kind of interesting. You know, you get the grandfather put in and so you have a repeat almost of the first issue, but now with this new factor in it, 
which begins to send out little ripples. It changes Helen, you know, a little bit. She's drinking less. You know, we're all trying to do that in 2024. So it, it's it kind of <laughs> like it, it begins to evolve a little bit and you get little hints of mystery and you get enough hints that there's something really up with this family. They're not quite human, like all this stuff. That's enough to get me on the hook for number three. But yeah, number three has got to show me something. If I get into number three and it's still the governess just standing in the house, watching out the window as they come back from the wilderness, I'm going to be like, that's when I'm going to start slamming keyboards and being like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> take me into the woods. It's all a cute little deer thingy. Uh, now I want to know, like, what else is going on here? So, like, yeah, the the overall just mystique and mystery still has me. But, um, yeah. And this is one where I'm like, I swore I was going to give up. Like every page, I was like, I might give up. And then I was just like, all right, I'm going to go. Like, right, ah, that's how they get you. That's how, yeah. that's how I was like, all right, all right, I'm going to go one more. So, mm -hmm. and, and the dynamic between the governess Helen and the grandfather is is kind of a centerpiece that holds it together. If you've ever watched old BBC shows, like yeah. BBC Network shows, Jesus, these kids. Um, yeah, that stuff is. It, it reminds me of that. It's very kind of like British comedy ish. And mm -hmm. so there's Very a lot much. of that that I, I I enjoy that stuff. I admit I enjoy that stuff. So it got me. It still has me for now. That's a great comparison. I think that is yeah. like a, a perfect comparison of a, of a BBC show. Nicole, how do you feel about this? And also the first issue, because uh, we didn't get a chance to, to kind of hear your thoughts on that. I admittedly actually was looking forward to this one coming out because I love this creative team. I, I, people think I hate Tom King because I'm very critical of Tom King a lot of the times. But I will say this. I think Tom King does his best work when he's not doing superheroes. He's doing something more original like this. That said, I read issue one and issue two back to back. And I think reading them together helps a lot and oh, this is one of those things where i it really does because i felt like i was reading a bigger piece and then when i got to the end of this it made me realize this is gonna be one of those things where i wish we had everything at once because then you can read it like a novel because it's built like a novel and i think that by doing it issue by issue we're almost doing the story a disservice i do mm -hmm. have some critiques though and this is a common critique i have with king it's that it's hard to keep track of whose point of view we're in or who's narrating at any given time and I almost have to have a notebook to track, okay, are we dealing with the tape recorder dude? Are we dealing with our BBC masterpiece theater people? Who, who, who are we tracking at any given time? And for me, that's a little bit of a challenge because this is a very thinky book and very dense in a way. Um, that said, I am completely hooked by this. Like, I want to know what the heck is going on why is that little cute little animal so cute? And is it probably evil? It's probably evil, isn't it? It's too cute. It looks like a it's Pokemon. Evil, right? I, I felt like it was a setup. I felt like it was a setup. It was a definite setup. Like I felt like, right? like, see that thing? like something was going to happen. Like it's going to be like a flip. I, I, I really thought thing. it was going to come out and like Flirtin. attack someone. Like my first thought was like, that's a Pokemon. No way. That's too cute. That's got to be evil. They're going to, and then when we, you know, we're, they're on a mission to take it back to like its yeah. nest or whatever something bad's going to happen. And then there's too much drinking, something bad. I mean, something bad's got to happen. There's, there's drinking, there's windows, there's a cute little animal that's clearly evil. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I'm concerned because we're going into a third issue. And having read a lot of Tom King, my concern is we're going to go to the third issue and no shoes are going to drop. And that's where they're going to lose me because we're building to a shoe drop or at least the, the stumbling of a shoe to drop. And I'm concerned like Kofi, we're going to get to the governess staring out a window as they come back and it'll be like the little, the cute little thing wasn't evil after all. What the heck? So I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay. It's six. It's a six issue series. Okay. Cause I couldn't yeah, remember how long the, we're heading was. to the midpoint and that's where things okay. come undone for King. And I really would like to see him subvert my expectations. But the thing that I will say about this is the art is almost enough to keep me going because I love how this looks. And I, I'm sorry, but the hair and the eyes, this just My the word. line work here just sells me every single time for this artist. And I there's just, a scene I, I, where they're next to each the, other, where the yes. uh, where the grandfather and the granddaughter are next to each other, and like, yes. oh, that was so well done. I know done exactly just... which one you're talking about. I know exactly <laughs> which one you're talking about. Like just that about uh, yeah. their eyes. It's yeah, it was like small. about their eyes and like, yes. oh, there's a there's a familiarity, familiarity and it's just the way eyes. the artwork presents it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. 
Like I, I would um, follow this artist into it. They could draw the phone book and I would, I would probably buy it to be perfectly honest. Agreed. I, I agree. I'm it, it's so it's funny. I had, and we'll get to that in a second because obviously we are going to be talking about wonder woman as well. Uh, another Tom King book and also from a set of different perspectives. I actually had a more difficult time in that book than I did with this one, as far mm -hmm. as handling who was talking and the narrator. Uh, I thought, I actually thought they did a good job of this one of like laying out visual clues for me to go, okay, we're not, we're not, talking for he's not talking to her anymore he's talking to somebody else we're forward in time like it was easier for me to grasp in this book for whatever reason uh than it actually was i had a harder time doing it in the other book um and i and i i really am like at the end of the day i think i'm just a sucker for I, i'm just a sucker for like this sort of dialogue uh i i didn't I didn't miss there's no there's no action set pieces. The most action that happens in this book is literally in the preview of him slamming the table. That is the most yeah, action. Yeah, there's like a table there's a table flip or, or smash. <laughs> yes. That's it. Uh and it a thing works. with swords. That's it. That's the only thing those are the only two a things that happen that thing could with be swords. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yeah. With swords, which is critical. So there's Oh, okay. Stuff. Well that. Okay, oh, that's yeah. okay. So that page. That's but that not doesn't really much count. Fun is the drug swords. <laughs> <laughs> but like so there's no action in this book and it really it was just kind of that layered storytelling uh that you know king is known for and i man mm -hmm. i just i was sucked in the entire time and by the end though i did go oh that's interesting there's not a bigger hook there is a hook mm -hmm. and i'm very excited for issue three and i'm in the same boat as you guys as in i really though do need issue three to like get them like get the ball moving because because we've done so much setup and I and I'm really invested. I'm already invested in these characters. I want to see this journey, but now I need you to kind of pick up the pace, have some answers to some things. Not everything, because it's six issues and I and I totally yeah. get it. And I want to be surprised, but I need some kind of bigger movement. Where we're especially now that we're moving beyond the house. So I I just I do need that in issue three. Uh, but as a as an issue overall, I was insanely captivated. Uh, I I very much have been. Uh, with this with the series so I, far so i actually ho hopefully i actually have a theory i think there's going to be i think a lot of this will be from thematically just kind of knowing story a little bit i feel like issue three will change uh, on a like in a big deal i don't think we can stay in the same premise because i think a lot of this has been you know the class of the house you know the formality right. of that the rules this thing and this girl who clearly does not fit into that mold and has this crazy savage wild side but doesn't really know herself um and everything from we get from the sketches from the grandfather he comes back i mean the way he takes down the table suggests mm -hmm. he's strong you know the way he's just tearing up food and he he disappears he comes back he's just like famished tears up food grunts a little bit pieces out that's like some wolverine ish right like i feel like we're gonna go <laughs> yeah. into the wild and find out that this man's like you know, he's just going to like do like, you know, Master Roshi type stuff, like rip off his clothes and be like ripped and like tangling with monsters. <laughs> and at first, Helen's sure. going to be like double T double UTF. And then she's going to like, you know, find herself and be like, oh, this is crazy. You know, this is awesome. And like, you know, and she'll become and that'd be awesome. I mean, if that we come back to that barbarian, you know, thing back around and it actually is something. And by the end of this, where she's actually like a badass, like Red Sonia type that'd out there cool. with swords. Yeah, like I, I think we can get there. I, I mean, if I'm picking up what Tom King's putting down, and I'm hoping because you know I'm betting a lot on this, I just, but I they feel just like... need him to pick up what he's putting down because yeah. again, I don't hate Tom King, but he does have a tendency to put stuff down and then not pick it back up. Please pick yeah, up what you happen. put down, <laughs> please, so. please. Although we did so get let's... a that's a good segue because there we did get yeah. some things that we put down, <laughs> you know, because I was yeah, I mean, I, I had my first kind of you lost me point with uh this next book I, I think we're going to so <laughs> yeah one, well no that, that's a perfect segue uh wonder woman number eight because the last issue was that kind of out of nowhere interlude type thing of like setting aside at, you know the entire thing that we had been really building towards and it was like oh hey we're gonna do this thing and it was Space just very Let's it was very ball. jarring yeah it was very <laughs> jarring so here though we do essentially almost act like that book didn't exist didn't at all exist? and we pick up right <laughs> and we pick up right where we left off and because of that i was a little i actually had to go back because i i kind of forgot exactly how that 
last issue before that last issue ended. And then I went, oh, okay, okay, I got it. I'm, I'm here. So then we move in here and there is the, you know, and you see it in the previous spaces, like typically the person who is the villain is talking and it's that kind of blue, but, but it's not really because sometimes it's hard to make out if that's Diana thinking to herself or if that's the other person. And so about midway through the issue, I kind of got jumbled. I was like, okay, who's, who's talking? Like, is it? Like, yeah, is that it was, and it was, I yeah. did too. But I think I that follow, was, oh. I think it was very purposeful. Yeah, like, I, I, I agree. I do, I do agree conflict. with that. Yeah. I, I do agree with that. I just, and this book is a primary example of why I've had some people message me being like, dude, what is your beef with Tom King? Because I do not like this run. Like, I am. So oh, my God. Nicole. Call me a hate. Call me a <laughs> hater. But I do not like this run. And oh, my God, this issue annoyed me so hard. And for me, it centers around two things. I do not feel like the Sovereign is a well enough developed villain for me to give two rats about what he's been trying to accomplish. Like bro, I don't care. You're just generic misogynistic villain number 403 to me. Okay, fine, whatever. And the other thing to me is I can get what King was attempting to do here, at least what I perceive he was attempting to do because I'm not a mind reader. I'm not going to pretend to be. But the idea that the way it came across to me as a female reader who loves Wonder Woman and has followed Wonder Woman forever, like little tiny baby Nicole's first character was Wonder Woman. Like, is it kept coming this idea that kept coming across and i get and realistically this is what the sovereign was trying to do but it just felt icky to me and the way it was presented is that women are oppressing themselves because she was like buying into the whole i can't break this because it's amazonian i can't break this i can't break this and then out of nowhere she breaks it and it's like between that random trip to the mall which was weird as all get out. And then this weird pseudo 50s fantasy dark twist from a villain who I don't quite buy anyway. With random biblical, and again, I, I grew up in an evangelical situation, so some of this stuff just made me twitch a little bit. I'm just like, what? <laughs> I, this whole thing just made me go, huh? What? And then following along, I, but I do think I do think some of that was cooked in there intentionally. I felt I feel like the confusion right. of perspective was intentional, and that was oh, well okay. done because it made me mad. <laughs> and See, I, I, did I, not I felt like that. I was in her head, like a little like she was confused, and it was like if you're trying to mess with okay. someone's head from a psychological because you can't break her physically. I mean, you have to think of it that way. You can't break Wonder Woman physically. She's going to break. Well, they've you. already tried. Like it's that's not. the that's the point. This how is the you, latest in a series. Some, yeah. How do you break right. someone you can't break physically? You break them psychologically. But even and Tom King would would understand that. So yes. So on the basis of the point is to challenge her mentally and thus challenge the reader. It fires on all cylinders. I just don't feel it was done well. But I also don't feel like most of this run has been done well because I feel like a lot of the a lot of it is done superficially, and I would really have loved to have seen more development go into the Sovereign as a villain I would give more rats about. Because, again, he's random misogynistic villain 403 to me, though I did enjoy watching her crush his windpipe. So, <laughs> I, I enjoy Kofi, that. What are, you, what are you thinking? Um, I think there's an... And we've been circling it a lot, but it, I think it's been there from the very first issue with this run. When it's done, we'll kind of be, you know, dissecting it and talking about it for a while. But I think there is an argument to be made, kind of springboarding off Nicole about, is this a Wonder Woman story that kind of affirms and reinforces Wonder Woman for girls? Or is this a mm -hmm. story that kind of makes men re re-examine wonder woman and look at it differently because what we've talked about over the themes, cause we've covered basically every issue of this is the first striking thing for me. And I, I never kind of, you know, do we ever assume it's just us as men, but you know, but like, you know, I never thought about it, but we, you and I were really taken back about the artwork and how this presents the physicality of wonder woman as very challenging. 
this is a book like that we talked about, you know, some of our favorite images are the more anime influenced, like Wonder Woman in the Dark with the lasso up, but she's small in those, you know, she's, her frame is small. She's small in there. She's powerful, even though she has a small frame. And this run, she is clearly in every Amazonian is clearly like a WA BA player compared to a bunch of race jockeys, right? Like to the men around them. And so <laughs> like, face. Yeah, the, the physicality, um, just making us relook at things like a uh, thought we, we think, oh, it's so girly. She has an invisible jet. And then in this book, we're like, yeah, dude, it's still a jet. Like, and when you see mm -hmm. it outside a window with big guns, your little, you know, your thing might shrink a little and be like, oh, ooh, you know, that's pretty formidable. Like, you know, so right. there is a lot of this. And I think some of the hardest hitting parts of it for you and I have been the things that makes us as men kind of stop and re-examine Wonder Woman, kind of like what she means. And this is being written by a man who who admittedly very much loves Wonder Woman because we sat down and talked to Tom mm -hmm. King on this show. Go, oh, yeah. go back and look at that interview. Um, but it's still inevitably from a man's perspective. And I can see how this gets a little ob objecty at times, right? And there are certain objects. Like, I feel like the Sovereign isn't a villain. I feel like from the way he just says they and all that and like the way he speaks, it is this kind of almost like an anime demon lump of like every gross societal mm -hmm. misogynistic Very kind much. of concept just lumped into a person mm -hmm. and and with the kind of the fable kind of you know thing that this is where all this stems from right like the you know the fable mythology that this all this negative stuff comes from a guy like this and his magic lasso reinforcing for all of us that this is how we should think and this is how it should be and and doing that um and so this issue was very interesting to me because midway through i was like we are deep in the effing pool and i hope we can swim back to the side before we all drown out here because i mean by the time that yeah, yeah. inner monologue starts kind of mold melding and things are getting it's really kind of crazy like i was like oh man is there going to be like a way out of this but what kind of struck it for me and maybe it's just because i you know we read that awesome story of hippolyta in in like the amazons what was that called matt the one that i love so much uh the uh, the kind of three volume arc about the amazons and their formation in Hippolyta's oh, his, ride. uh historia. historia yeah yeah historia oh yeah. so good yeah one of the best go i mean one of the things you should have on mm. your on your coffee table is just if you're yeah. a comic fan you're like here's comics you want to be see grown-up stuff like boom take this um but uh yeah it's just that line in the end point about like how wonder woman's spirit is is so independent and so strong that even when she's kind of at her lowest point and it's just going you know where we all are at our lowest point crying back to mommy right like that's everybody's lowest point when you're like in the foxhole um she's like you know you remember like who is this person you're being you don't listen to me when i yep. told you not to do everything that you have done and then she's like oh right yeah i do like you know I do my own thing. I have my own will and not even the will of the, you know, that whole mother daughter thing is, is something that bends me, which can bend a lot of ladies. Trust me. I know. <laughs> so we can, you know, we can just kind of in her breaking th through that and showing like, yeah, the indomitable spirit of women. I don't know if that connects, but it was a good fable for me. Like I, I was like, Oh, like it made me see Wonder Woman as tough in a very, 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 very different way that didn't involve beating people up, which is hard for, you know, I'm from Philadelphia and a man. So it's hard for me not to understand that beating people up is the key <laughs> way of doing things here. Um, That's yeah. true. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so, I get it. yeah. And so like, I mean, I think it's working for me in that, right? Like I've, I've had to put more respect on Wonder Woman's name through this mm -hmm. than I think I have before in just entertaining and just on an entertainment level prestige comic level and just like as a character level in like getting to know Diana. But I mean, I, de I definitely don't think you're alone in kind of the, this is very much a fable, right? Like this whole thing is presented like a fable by the evil it's witch true. or villain that somebody found in a cave and is now telling us this story. Yeah. You got to remember he of, is just so, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. We're all the way back to the levels of dreaming in this inception. We are He's just true. chilling in a jail cell somewhere. Just chilling yeah, in a jail cell. Now, I do, I do. Daughter. Um, yeah, I just and I do. Conclude by, before I forget, by just saying, oh, yeah. like, what I'm kind of curious to see is, is this, is this narrator reliable? Because. That's true. 
it, what is he telling this to Trinity for? And can we really believe the point mm -hmm. of his story is, oh yeah, Wonder Woman, your mom is awesome. Like, I don't know. So yeah, I'm there's, kind of there's like, more to it mm. than that. Exactly. It'll so be I'm still in the, get to the end. Yeah. But I, I do want to touch I back to the said It's a perspective I hadn't considered. Is, our, is this a Wonder Woman story that is geared to women or is it meant to be reframing Wonder Woman for men? Because you're right. Um, women and girls look at Wonder Woman, we see one thing men see something else. And this is a Wonder Woman who is definitely taking up space. And her presentation is very different in a lot of ways. And I do know that a lot of the people that I've talked to about this issue, like my, my female friends, we see this book very, very differently. And then my guy friends are like, I don't, I don't see it that way, but dude, Wonder Woman's big. Like, what the heck? And I, I think that's a good perspective for me as a, as a person who reads this book religiously that I hadn't seen it that way. Like for me, I get angry at some of this because I'm like, why aren't we centering Wonder Woman differently? Why is this approach being different? I still don't like this the way it is because I, my reaction to it's visceral and different, but I do definitely, I'm now, this is a different perspective that I haven't actually seen. And I really appreciate you mentioning that Kofi because it's going to make me go back and see this. And I am curious to see when we get to the end of this, aren't we reframing this for the, the girlies? And the girly identifying folk who have always seen Wonder Woman one way and has been screaming for years, please, please put some respect on Diana's name. Or are we getting the guys who are getting a crash course in Amazons are going to take up space? And I'm curious yeah. to see how this shakes out in the end. Well, you're going to get that regardless. Because those, well, those yeah, we're, people, we're always like, going to get some sort of di discourse on this. It's, it's probably that, like, going to happen, but yeah, like tr yeah. trash seeks out, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the internet ideas but, but, at all times. Visually, time. and just looking at the art here on our screen, visually speaking, this is not your tiny cur like she's curvy, but she's no. curvy in a. This is a physical human being who has physical form, not a male gaze yeah. curve. This is a. I right. am a living human breathing woman well not human but you know what i mean i am a yeah, woman yeah. Who in the world has physicality it's a different yeah. type of look and even now, even the like 1950s is esque look it's not the pinup type it's a this is a house dress like my my right. grandma would have worn in the 50s just to do her dishes kind of thing very different approach and i'm gonna have yeah. to reframe how i look at things a little bit now i will say i don't know about matt and uh, uh, just real quick i there are the other thing that taught me that that made me think this issue particularly was subtexted for men is I don't think you can be a man or even be like a husband or a boyfriend and not feel like substantially deeply. And you might not hear us talk about that because we don't talk about these things, but like it by some of the things that like mm. between Steve and Diana, that whole dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Even if you know you're a good guy, you're still like there's some of this that's just like that feels really icky. Like if you've ever well, made your wife was the mad point. in a domestic in a domestic sense, like if your wife has ever looked at you and said, because you said the wrong thing about the dinner or something or something, like there is a certain amount of connectivity to that that I was like, oof, like this is uncomfortable. Like I do not yeah. like this. I, I think like it's important to. I think it's important to highlight what you guys said, and then we got to move because we only got a little time. We got to hit a bunch of other books. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, but but I think it's it's important um, because I both uh, points are number one are are valid and I think there it this book is a weird mix of both mm -hmm. and I think to me that's why it works um, but I but I totally understand um, how someone else uh, can read this and just get a totally different read because because all those things right the the villain being very generic misogynist what I, I think that's the point. I think I think it is one of a collective whole. I think he's very much a we're going to see a it's a collective of people. It's the ideals. It's the I, the trash ideas that are more the villain here than anything else. Right. I think it's those things. And I think as over time that will hopefully bear out. And if not, then I think that's a kind of a missed opportunity. Then it really is just like a throwaway person. Uh, but it's one of those things that I kind of can't really make a judgment on until I see the whole thing come yeah. to fruition and and also the hippolyta scene was one of those things where um you know i didn't see it as like uh you know oh i just you know the power was in me all the time as a as in like a scapegoat kind of way i thought i very much see myself in that spot of you know who do i go to in those times where i'm very much 
not sure what is where my solid ground is. Uh, and I go to my parents, I go to my family, I go to people who who matter. And for her, that's Apolita. Mm -hmm. I hope for Ember, that's me. You know, I hope for Ember, that's my like, that's how I see those scenes. Now it's forever changed how I see scenes like that. Um, and so I, I look at that more as that like, I hope I can be the reaffirming presence for there are going to be times where you just feel like what you thought was solid is not anymore. Um, and so I, I, it was just, all of those things are really interesting and I love this discussion. We do have to move, uh, <laughs> to some other yeah. books. I would really stay here the entire shout out time. To the Wonder Girls. We got to shout out the yes, Wonder Girls. I was going to say, that was the whole thing. That was yes. the other yes. scene. Yes. That was such a fun yeah. scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, so good. Somebody. Yeah. Wonder Girls torturing somebody and Cassie. I of all loved people. that so much. I was like, whoa. Yeah, and Yara's Yara is so man, yeah. my God, I love that any. I just need where's oh, where's my freaking yeah. Wonder Girl book? Uh, but yeah, I, know, man. <laughs> I just need that. Uh, R.I.P. That book. Um, yeah. so yeah, I think there was just so much here to talk about. We only have time for probably about two books here, let's so it. let's uh, <laughs> and then we gotta wrap. <laughs> um, let's do uh, Nicole. You got you had a chance to uh read Blow Away. Uh, number yes. one. What did what did you think of this? I actually really, really, really like this book. Um, the nuts and bolts of this book is, so we've got a photojournalist who is in the Arctic and she is there to capture um, some rare natural thing. And in the process may have stumbled across a much, much larger mystery. This book is beautifully done um, and it's very sparse. So it's a, an incredible example of using the environment as a storytelling device and supporting it with, with the art and the narrative while also still managing to build a mystery. And there's this a cadence to this book. I can't, I cannot describe it. The uses the isolation of being in the Arctic, the weird voyeuristic, almost rear window type of kind of vibe to it. And then you get this possible maybe murder mystery, but who's watching the watcher kind of situation because you discover not to give too much away, but she may not be alone and she may not necessarily be the most emotionally balanced person either. And it is just a fantastic book. And it's a little bit of a slow read. There's not a lot of action here because you're, you're getting this blown out look. You're seeing everything through her lens in a sense, but did these people fall off the mountain? What's going to happen when she goes out? Is there a bigger mystery at play? And I just think it's really beautifully done. The art here is fantastic. And again, it's one of those examples of everything just balances. You've got the environment. You've got the way the, the narrative is told. You've got the art supporting it. And the, it, the sparse uses the concept of the natural environment and the way nature can be isolating, but also full of detail and perspective to really enhance the storytelling. And while we know absolutely nothing about these people, Thompson gives us just enough breadcrumbs to make us wonder what the heck is actually out on that ice. I, I can only, the really real comparison I can give you is if you are watched True Detective um, Night Country at all, and it's not mm. like the same supernatural vibes at all, but that same kind of cold frozen waste, like there's something hinky going on in the cold. This kind of has a similar vibe without maybe i don't know we're only one issue in without the supernatural aspect of it so there's definitely some it's a mystery but there's a thriller aspect to it as well and i really 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 like this book a lot i will always give zach thompson a a shot uh his, his books are always intriguing um for for me uh so i will definitely i i started to read this one i didn't get to finish it so i really enjoyed it uh so far um kofi did you want to hit you got here, some Star I got this. Wars, you, you got some X-Men. Go. What you got? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Boom. Let's start. Fall of X. Complete damn mess. Having these, uh, you know, <laughs> fall of the House of X and dead X-Men books coming out at the wrong times, giving us pieces of the story and then other story. Total mess. Total mess. But yeah, sure. We're in we, Moira. We're always going to mourn what Moira was. So this is all not going smoothly. I also read um, the action comics. So that, or was it Superman this week? Superman, Superman 13. Oh, House of so Brainiac. Good. Yeah, House of Brainiac is hitting so good. Great thing. Superman and Lobo. Superman's on a hog in this. Like Yes, no that was the thing yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Superman's on a chopper. So and going through space. This is... This is the kind of Superman thing I need to see in a movie. This is crazy. It's hype. 
Zarnians are everywhere. It's great. There's Brainiacs everywhere. And there's a little Honey, I Shrunk the Kids thing we're getting into at the end. And so, like, <laughs> it's insane it's on all levels. Yeah, Joshua Williamson's really, really out here killing it. I read Ultimate Black Panther. Ultimate Black Panther. Um, I don't know. Some of you guys are hard on this book. I know. But I just like that this is like a weird, this is like what Ultimate was for me back in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing, but just a clear space and a new context. And in this new context, I'm enjoying the hell out of this. It's awesome to see T'Challa in this version of Killmonger going to look for Storm in this crazy Raiders of the Lost Ark thing. A Koye, a queen, a Koye, and Shuri kind of going at it and having this different kind of dynamic. So I'm enjoying it. And it's a clear space for Black Panther. Artwork's great. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of enjoying it. And I believe that's, uh, that's all I had to cover. Right. Is that all I did? Boom. I think that's yeah. No, you got me. You knocked that out of the park. Uh, yeah. I, bef before, before we go, uh, I love spider boy. You will not hit me off that mountain. Spider boy rules. <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> dance slot. Spider-man book. You know why it rules? Cause Spider-Man ain't in it. Cause Peter Parker oh, sucks now. Oh, that's man. why he sucks now. Okay. The, the current Peter Parker blows and i'm so glad he's not in this book and this issue he's not in this issue at all and it's great <laughs> it's just great and also spider spider boy is my favorite is it my favorite it's it, it's right there with like spider woman which was also great this week uh spider woman was really fun they brought you know star back which was nice to see her brought out from villain jail i don't know where, where she's been uh but it, but spider woman was great it's really fun it does take a weird thing of like hey this really traumatic thing happened in the last issue so like let's move the character across the country that feels kind of abrupt and like they explain it but like uh, once you I buy that i've seen that once you can yeah like once you kind of rationalize it the the actual like book and the story and where it's going and stuff is really interesting so like it took my head a little bit to get around that um but yeah really enjoyed that uh nicole anything else you want to shout out before we go the weatherman yes like, read that oh my god i'm sorry but like okay first of all if you have not read the previous volumes to this please read them before jumping into this series because i made the mistake of not doing that was very confused at first but then i caught up and it's fantastic this issue in particular is kind of like everything's starting to come together to the point of like a confrontation it, there's like so much humanity humans suck politics intrigue a crazy virus, apocalyptic awesome. stuff after the post-apocalyptic. It's like apocalypse after an apocalypse has already happened. There's a coup. There's a coup. Like it, it, it's like it's awesome. I, you I should do 70s styles. Yeah, you need 70s styles trailers for comics doing but done by Nicole, like <laughs> the weatherman. <laughs> It's an apocalypse after an apocalypse and there's a virus like i would have so much fun with that to be perfectly there is no accurate way to explain this but like there really is trying, there's not i can't really tell you what it's about but let's just put it this way someone is trying to atone for their sins by saving someone who may not be able to be saved as they're trying to wipe out the rest of humanity and there's a virus it's amazing Boom! political intrigue and lots of blood it's great all right and it's really great. awesome art yeah so it's so that's so andrew art. Andrew, if you asked what it's about, that's what it's about. And that's honestly the most what? concise it's way to describe that book. I don't, I don't but it's know. so fun. You should definitely try out the first issue, so see what you fun. think, because you'll you'll Do you'll it. know if you'll like it. All right, you we gotta go. One. One. I had one last oh, thing. Oh, yes. Just read go, Star go, Wars. Go. Star Wars High Republic is still happening. Star Wars High Republic is still happening, and High ah, High Republic Saber for Hire has one of my favorite characters, Ty Yorick who used to be a Jedi, but said, nah, I'm just gonna become a monster hunter instead <laughs> and is is yeah. badass. So Star Wars High Republic still going on. I'm out. Boom. Oh boy. All right. Ooh. Well, you can catch even uh, more of our reviews on comicbook.com. You can check out all of our long form reviews. We cover a ton, even more than we cover here on the main site. You can also catch our regular show, Comic Book Nation, on Fridays, or we'll even fit some comics in there from time to time just because there's so much to talk about. Thank you for everything. Thank you for watching the show, listening on our podcast platforms. And until next week, peace out. Deuces. <laughs>